All righty, now will Obama swing left or right? That story tops tonight's two minute drill. Your most valuable panel tonight townhall.com editor Katie Pavlich, Dow Jones New Wires columnist Al Lewis, and my friend and buddy, Euro Capital CEO Peter Schiff, is here. Let's fire up the clock. How about that? All right, President Barack Obama will address the country next Thursday. A week from tonight, actually. And uh, he may be up against the first NFL game. His topic, a new jobs plan. And panel, there are plenty of things the president probably can get through this Republican-dominated House, right? You get trade deals, you get tax reform, a moratorium on regulations. Katie, now, is he going to do that triangulation thing on the GOP, or is he just going to go out and try to appease his, appease his base with uh, something that has no chance of passing? <laughs> yeah, I doubt we're going to hear Obama not uh, slam the GOP a few times during his job speech. But I think if the White House was smart, they would stop talking about jobs because we all know that the government doesn't create jobs and talk about deregulation, talk about how he's going to change regulation in the EPA, talk about how he's going to um, suspend the payroll tax. I mean, he needs to do the things that the government can do to deregulate the marketplace and businesses will take care of the rest. Amen, Katie. I would just vote for you. I'd forget those other knuckleheads. Uh, Al, all right. Al, what's going to go on with... Uh... Uh, you know, this speech, is he, is he going to try to do this thing meh, 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 that he can't pass? I mean, that just kills me. Well, first of all, Obama is a very good speech giver. That's how he got where he is today. Yeah, I don't know Hopefully that. some of that oratory, uh, you know, sparks the market or does something. But frankly, uh, the results are in. And guess what? The unemployment rate is 9.1 percent. We got 25 million people unemployed in this uh, country. Not all of that is his fault, but his record on jobs is abysmal. So I just think whatever he has to say on the issue is completely irrelevant. Peter, you, you were going to run for Senate one, one time, as I remember. What is the one thing you would want uh, Obama to talk about that would actually stimulate job creation? Well, maybe if he made this a resignation speech, that would help. <laughs> but, you know, what are the things that they could do? Instead of talking about creating new jobs, how about if Obama stops trying to destroy the jobs that we already have? Yes. Yeah, getting rid of some of these regulations. I had the CEO of Gibson Guitar on my radio show today. Obama is trying to put him out of business and throw 1,200 Americans out of work I because they don't like the fact that they're importing Indian wood. All right. I mean, we, the economy no is weakening up as that, it is without having Obama sticking his dogs on our manufacturers. All right, I'm with you. You're right. All right, let's keep going. After a series of uh, <laughs> new pro-union rules issued by the NLRB, South Carolina's Republican governor has had enough. Nikki Haley, good for her. She reportedly reports crippling the National Labor Relations Board. She wants the lone Republican on the board to resign in protest. She calls the NLRB, quote-unquote, un-American. Big Al, is she right? <laughs> What's more American than calling somebody un-American? Listen, Toby, you know what? You can hate the NLRB and you can hate the unions and you yeah. can disagree with their agendas, but this is just rhetoric and I think it reflects poorly on her uh, and, and it just shows that she's not being all that effective in her position. Katie, uh, are you a hater on the NLRB too? Don't hate the player, uh, just hate I'll, the game? I'll be, a, I'll, I'll be a hater on the NLRB. Look, I think there's nothing more un-American than um, shutting down a manufacturing plant for opening a manufacturing plant in a state <laughs> that doesn't necessarily go with union jobs. I mean, what's more un-American than shutting down jobs just because you disagree with their non-union policies? I mean, I think that's really un-American there. And I think it's a brilliant, not only political move by Nikki Haley, but it's also a way for her to kind of stay clear on, on the ethics side of it by having someone on the Republican side right. step down and protest. Peter, quickly, do uh, you have anything to add to this? Yeah, well, it's no coincidence that the industries dominated by unions are disappearing. They're destroying mm -hmm. their companies, and they are very un-American. They're anti-private property, anti-capitalism, free markets. Uh, I agree that the, the unions have been a disaster for this country, particularly for the workers. Well said, Senator. All right, let's go. All right. A new ban went into effect today in Michigan. More than 500 bars. There's more than 500 bars in Michigan. I've been to all of them. Decided to ban any and all Michigan lawmakers from entering the premises. Mm, thanks to a ban on smoking that left more than a few patrons unhappy. All right. Even those who don't smoke were unhappy with this thing, all right? All these regulars are smokers. They enjoy coming in, watching the games, and drinking their beer and smoking while they're here. So I'm sure it's going to hurt a lot of businesses. All right, Katie. Banning lawmakers going to a bar. Is that a good idea? 
hey, you know, if it's costing businesses $200 million, then I say these lawmakers are getting a taste of their own medicine, and it's bipartisan. <laughs> so why not? It's their property. Businesses can serve who they wish and when they wish. So more power wow. to them. But, Peter, you know, you know, in New York, uh, they ended uh, smoking. It hurt for, like, the first year or so. But I happen to know a few people in the bar business here in New York, and uh, their business has come back. You know, why, why get so steamy on this stuff? Yeah, you know, I really, I really like this concept. I just like to expand it. Let's ban <laughs> politicians from the entire country. <laughs> I love it. Uh, now, see, now, now we're on to something. Uh, Al, are you, are you now going to jump on the bandwagon, the, the ban politicians? We're banning. Some guys want to ban no, contributions, I think, I think right? We, I think we got to get the politicians in as many bars as we can so they could sit down, meet the people, and maybe have a few drinks and maybe like a little inebriation would give them some better ideas. I'm down with this banning smoking thing, though. You know, I used to smoke. It's one of the hardest things I ever do to quit. And the reason why I'm such a Nazi about, about smokers is because I cannot walk down a sidewalk or a street without seeing somebody flicking their butts all over. Why do smokers think the world is their personal ashtray? Well, Clean it up out there, and maybe people will be more sympathetic to your plight. Way to go, Al. I'm with you on that, too, by the way. All right, look at here. Fair enough. Online analysts uh, say daily deal sites are losing quite a bit of their luster. Groupon visits uh, right now, for example, they were down like 50% last week from the second week in June. That would have obviously peaked uh, this year. Peter, should investors steer clear of this uh, social commerce bubble like Groupon? Well, group, I wouldn't touch these. I mean, Groupon's not even public yet, but... Uh, yeah, but they're going to yeah, do an no, IPO, right? I think this right? is the new fad. Yeah. Um, and I, 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 the valuations are nosebleed. I, you know, I, I, I wouldn't touch any of these social media stocks. Uh, you know, give them a few years and, and, and see how it shakes out. But I, I would go near them. Well, well, Katie, one of the things on, on these sites is, is that, you know, all over the world, these guys are trying to compete. Everybody's cloned them. There's like 5,000 copycats of everything going right. on. Right, so I guess let the best deal win. But, I mean, you have to look at the timing of this, too. I think that it's summertime, and a lot of the deals you get on a Living Social or Groupon you have to use within a couple of days, maybe the next month or two. And summertime is when you're not necessarily in the city where you're getting the deals. So I think that maybe you shouldn't be investing in it right away because they are brand new. But I think that maybe once people get back in school, back in college, um, back in the workplace after a summer break, that we'll see a pickup in that again. I hope so, because yeah. I love Living Social. I think they give you a lot of say, really good deals. Like, so. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to want to get an endorsement from you. Hey, Al, you yeah. know, you obviously look like a man who's at the cutting edge of all fashion and everything else. So um, are you buying these things from the Living Social and Groupon? I mean, you get little massages and facials and stuff for half off. <laughs> You know what? My wife is buying them, and I keep telling her, you know what this is? This is junk mail. Just because they don't put it, uh, you know, on, just because they put it online doesn't mean it's, it's not junk mail. You know, the secret behind all of these things is that the companies that are actually advertising for the Groupons are losing money. All these promotions that people, yeah. restaurants and such, are doing, they're, they're losing money. So, you know, it's like everything else that loses money on the Internet. Eventually, you got to ask the question, Toby, how long can they keep losing money? I'm with you. You know, I like, I like the sites where you buy the existing coupons that have already been sold for like 50% lower. That one I like. All right, guys. Great to have <laughs> you. Look up on volume. All right, exactly. On deck. The Tea Party gears up for their first Romney event. Will it be the nail in the coffin for the sliding presidential candidate? And thanks to technological devices, right? Did you know we're on the verge of living to 150 or more? I would have taken better care of myself. Was that going to be the nail in the coffin for Obamacare? Stick around. We're going to find out all this stuff.